if I told you we can make you better? You're a fighter. We can give you abilities most men only dream of. Make you a superhero. You just promise you'll do right by me, so I can do right by someone else. And please don't make the super suit green or animated. Okay, Deadpool. <laughs> now, this is uh, one of the more unique action uh, comic book superhero movies you will ever see. It is rated R, unlike virtually all of the ones before it. Although they're talking about putting more R-rated superhero uh, movies out. Even the new Wolverine movie, they're talking about making R. But I want you to think about this. Put this in perspective. Any 17-year-old up can go into any, they can waltz into any old Megaplex theater. They can waltz into, walk, waltz into any Cinemark theater. When it is uh, out on DVD, they'll be able to get it at the Red Box and so on. Uh, no problem. For those who are under 17, they too can go see it. Uh, but only with their parental supervision. <laughs> I would uh, advise parents to be very aware of what's in this movie if they were to do that. That's why I have to admit I'm a little mystified. Uh, now, it's it's rugged. It it deserves. I mean, it is R, 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 R. But I am mystified. Why? When you have an establishment like Bruvies, where you cannot even get into the joint, and everybody's been there. Bruvies was kind of on the cutting edge uh, long before even the Megaplex theaters thought about serving food and different things that were atypical to a movie theater. Bruvies was there on that cutting edge. And so you have to be 21 years of age to even go in the place. And it's a movie that you can see anywhere, but because of the liquor license, the ability, or the alcohol license, the ability to sit back and watch Deadpool and have a beer which countless numbers of people are going to do here when it comes out on DVD, Bruvies is now in jeopardy of fines and penalties and even their alcohol license. Uh, this happened to them on Hangover 2. Uh, I, 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 I just don't quite get it, to tell you the truth. We are asking on our Doug Wright Show Facebook page, and we just... Put up the, the news story, and we said, should Bruvy's liquor license be in jeopardy for showing Deadpool? You be the judge. And as I was reading the various articles on this today, I saw that uh, my friend Rocky Anderson was the legal representative uh, for Bruvy's and our former uh, mayor in Salt Lake City. Rocky, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Doug. Great to be with you. A as always. A am I missing something here, Rocky? Because I <laughs> No, you're not missing anything. <laughs> The, the the only thing anybody's missing here is that this is a very anachronistic statute. It goes way, way back to the time when the United States Supreme Court said that if you're if you're dealing with alcohol, that the Twenty First Amendment, which did away with prohibition of alcohol, somehow gave the states more ability to restrict freedom of speech and expression than would be otherwise allowed under the First Amendment. So we know that these restrictions cannot be applied to any other movie theater. I mean, this is Deadpool is the highest grossing R-rated movie in history. It's being shown all over the world. It's being shown throughout the state at other theaters. And the only reason that we have a statute that the DABC is applying against Bruvies is because Way back when, far before 1996, and that's a crucial year, and I'll explain why, states thought that they could do more to censor people and their conduct and expressions than the First Amendment would otherwise allow if alcohol was involved. Well, then along came a case in 1996. It's called the 44 Liquor Mart case. And the Supreme Court said, you know what we said before in our earlier case, the LaRue case in 1972? We're disavowing. They use that language. We're disavowing the reasoning there that the 21st Amendment cannot trump the First Amendment. And whether you're serving alcohol or not, the same First Amendment rules apply. And so California uh, had a statute almost identical to ours, and the one that we have on the books now. <clears throat> and they tried to apply it to prevent some 
erotic conference or convention that they were going to hold. And the district court said, no, you can't do that. The statute's unconstitutional. It went up the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. And they, only didn't, they didn't only say this is unconstitutional. You can't restrict more than you would otherwise be able to do under the First Amendment just because alcohol is involved. Mm-hmm. And it- they also said that any reasonable governmental official could not believe, given the state of the law at the time, that you can restrict more under the First Amendment just because alcohol is involved. Idaho recognized this last session in their legislature. There was a lawsuit there, like the one we're about to file, and the state said, okay, forget it, we're not going to enforce this, let's get a legislative solution. And the legislature, even publicly, in the media, there were legislators saying, no, the statute's unconstitutional, we'll be beat in court, that's why we're changing it. And what they did was adopted the federal constitutional obscenity statute. So they can't go beyond, even when people are serving alcohol, what you can normally do under the First Amendment. So it's simply that the, the attorney general, the legislature, the lawyers involved haven't been keeping up on this, and the DABC has been going around enforcing, especially against Bruvies, this unconstitutional statute, uh, imposing unconstitutional fines, which they did five years ago for the hangover part two, which again was playing in theaters all over the country. And now they're threatening fines, suspension of their license, and possible revocation, which means the, the destruction of this great local business, which so many of our residents and visitors really love and enjoy. It really is kind of a a landmark now. It's kind of a famous watering hole, a place where you can watch movies. As I mentioned, you know, it has quite a long legacy. And long before it became popular to really take food in and different things of that nature, Bruvies has been on the cutting edge of a lot of things. What What is going to happen here, Rocky? Uh, because I understand that you and Bruvies have asked for an apology to, for the money, the fines to come back, and so on, and just kind of move on. Is this destined for a lawsuit, in your opinion? Well, we're also asking for absolute assurances that there will be no enforcement of this unconstitutional statute. And it's the Attorney General's job. I was was amazed yesterday to read in the newspaper that the Attorney General said, oh, we're leaving this to counsel for the DABC. No, it's the Attorney General's job to determine if legislation is unconstitutional and whether they, any agency of the state that's within the executive branch should be imposing these kinds of not only fines and, and suspensions or revocations of licenses, but even the threat of it, which constitutes a tremendous chilling and restriction of basic First Amendment rights. And it's also a violation, of course, of the Utah Constitution. Article 1, Sections 1 and Section 15, that guarantee the right of freedom of expression and speech. It, it it was so interesting when I was reading this because I also read, and you know, I've, I've been to Bruvies, but I, I don't frequent it often, so I don't know all of the nuances over there, but I have, I have heard that they have never had a violation, you know, underage drinking, anything like that, which, you know, you, you look at many stores, many highly respectable stores have had citations, whether it's selling alcohol or even uh, tobacco. I, as far as I can tell, Bruvies is, is clean. Bruvies is never had a liquor-related violation, never a complaint. The only thing that they faced was five years ago, uh, a complaint just like this one, and ultimately a fine uh, to which they were intimidated and coerced to agree, and they paid somewhere around $1,700 yeah. in, in a fine. So, you know, it, it's time that our local businesses are no longer living in terror and being coerced by and intimidated by a state agency like the DABC. It's interesting, Rocky, because uh, as as you put it, uh, you were quoted in one of the articles that I read today as saying, well, you know, a taxpayer expense, at least three uh, uh, undercover <laughs> agents got a free beer and saw the movie. No, Doug, it's worse <laughs> than that. These three agents who the state taxpayers apparently bought their beer and their admission and paid their time to sit through these movies. Two of them had already seen the movie once 
on their own. The other one had seen it twice, and it had only been released like two weeks by that time. <laughs> oh, man. Rocky, I really do appreciate your insights. And as this moves forward, I hope you'll keep me in the loop, and we'll, we'll kind of watch how this unfolds. Thank you, Doug. And this impacts all of us, not just the businesses. It impacts the First Amendment rights of every single one of us in the state. Rocky, thanks for joining us. Rocky Anderson, who is uh, representing Bruvies and uh, also, of course, our former Salt Lake City mayor. It